Okay, good afternoon. Thank you all of you for coming, uh, braving the weather. But uh, since we have a minister that comes, came all the way braving the weather, you just came from around the corner, so that's, uh, that's fine. Well, thank you again for coming. And uh, the plan is the following. Our provost <coughs> will say a few words. And it's great because I, I'm going to dare to say that it's his first public words as provost, even if it's not. It is. I'll, it is. I'll, I'll say so. It's one of my, it's my favorite. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, the minister will say a few other words. Now you know that most of them are professors when they get the control of the mic it's going to be a problem to turn it off but we'll eventually do that and then we turn to a third professor Nuno, who will present the program and the opportunities and then we open for questions comments and so forth okay so provost jim garrett please thank you jose and uh thank you all for uh, being here and for inviting me to uh to kick this off with a, uh, a welcome. Uh, I'd like to, to say, uh, first, it's, it's my great pleasure to see uh, so many of you here and to uh, see our Portuguese colleagues here, especially uh, CMU Minister Manuel Ipor. Uh, thank you so much for um, for being here and to, uh, to help uh, launch this, uh, this very important uh, program. And I'd also like to acknowledge and thank uh, President uh, of the Portuguese National Science Foundation, uh, Paulo Floral. Uh, thank you for being here as well. Um, we have a number of de uh, members from the delegation uh, uh, with uh, um, uh, from our Portuguese delegation of faculty and company representatives. And uh, I'd like to uh, acknowledge uh, our two new directors of the Portugal program. Uh, uh, Nuno Nunes, uh, who's uh, one of the directors, and uh, Silva Castro is the executive director of the Portugal program. Thank you for being here. I recall, my, one of you, Jose, you mentioned that uh, this is my first official uh, uh, talk. It's actually close, but I've been on the job a month. But I was on the job two weeks uh, as dean, and I got invited to go to Portugal as my first official uh, activity as uh, Dean of the College of Engineering. And uh, I uh, I enjoyed it back then, and it's been nothing but more uh, pleasure and uh, excitement as I've seen over my uh, six years as Dean to see the Portugal program uh, go through uh, such a successful uh, set of phases. So um, this phase, of course, is focused on the new technologies of the knowledge society, including data science and engineering, artificial intelligence, machine learning, data analytics, economy, mobility, design thinking, uh, in a variety of social settings and applications. This program is, will pursue these with its instruments that include a, a strong educational program where uh, we here at CMU and our partner universities in Portugal will offer dual uh, degree programs at the master's and doctoral level, which uh, is something that I think our first phase uh, emphasized, and uh, now we're re-investing uh, in, in that in this next phase. Um, through strong research projects that, with par that partner schemes from Portuguese universities and companies and teams from CMU, as well as a range of uh, visiting exchange programs for students at all levels, from undergraduates to doctoral students as well as faculty. So, um, I, I, like I said, uh, as, as a young dean, I got a chance, young in terms of young in the position, <laughs> I'm not young in the other sense. Um, I got a chance to really see how that, that partnership can, can truly um, uh, benefit both uh, Carnegie Mellon and our colleagues in, in Portugal. We, we, uh, got a chance to really understand some interesting and challenging uh, problems and to work together with our colleagues. And I certainly foresee uh, the same thing to be happening here. Um, I also want to emphasize that the, the, a strong innovation component of this program builds on our entrepreneurship spirit and um, in the past has led to numerous successes 
uh, successful spin-offs uh, from the research. Uh, it, <coughs> Programs like uh, companies like Feed's Eye, Venium, Food uh, Babel, as well as a partnership established with companies like Portuguese Telecom or PT. Now, I'll, now, how do you pronounce that? Alpice? 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 I use too much uh, Italian in me to uh, pronounce it. So, Alpice. Um, or Novabas, uh, among others. So again, it's my great pleasure to welcome uh, Minister Vitor and President Peral uh, uh, and all of you uh, to this uh, open session. Uh, oh, by the way, I should have uh, get, it's saluted uh, Mr. Luis Silva, Mr. Silva here as well from Altice uh, Research Labs. Um, before I turn the uh, microphone over to uh, Minister Vitor, though, I, I would like to congratulate and thank uh, Lori Spears, who has uh, been uh, the executive director of uh, ICTI. Uh, she's been here uh, in that role for 11 years, but was with the university for how many years? 15 years total. Let's give Lori a big round of applause. This is her last uh, event uh, for uh, ICTI. She is moving on to be a, uh, a vice president at uh, a university in California. And on a day like today, I think <laughs> that is actually a pretty good idea, Lori. <laughs> uh, Mr. Minister, thank you for being here. <laughs> thank you very much, Jim. And uh, congratulations. Thank you. And uh, I'll be very brief and tell me always starting as uh, Jim finished. Uh, acknowledging the, the role of Lori within Carnegie Mellon. We all know you for many, many years in Portugal, and I'm sure that the success of the project has been and very much depending on you. So now you have a big task to make sure that we continue with that, uh, with that uh, uh, success. And again, let me also acknowledge all of you that flew many hours from Portugal to be here, from different parts of Portugal, from Bragança to the south, of the, the country, and the, the idea is always uh, the one we are um, proud to, to have the Carnegie Mellon, to start working and to keep working with the best to really achieve results which are scientifically sound at the world level, but also have an impact on society. Actually, earlier today, with the Dean of Finds, he was discussing the ways he could help, and I mentioned we don't want help. We want to build win-win relations with Carnegie Mellon, as we always did. And essentially, to build a, a, or a, to continue building a cooperative um, joint venture, always based on leading um, knowledge, um, leading <coughs> certainly to good research in any part of <coughs> the world, also, I'm sure, in Carnegie Mellon and in Portugal, and with that, as much as possible, as social and economic impact, as we did in the past. As Jim so well mentioned, the, this collaborative effort started about 10 years ago, by that time very much um, in the context of so-called Bologna process in <coughs> Europe, where many degrees have been created, um, and that was the idea 10 years ago. It was particularly <coughs> important in, by that time in the current or by the time the European scenario of developing new degree programs at the mass and the PhD issue. That time it was successfully achieved, is over. We built two joint degrees in the European West context, where a number of uh, joint degrees between Carnegie Mellon and Portuguese universities were um, established. We move years uh, after years, especially also with a strong entrepreneurial context, and that in the second phase was very important, setting up new companies, essentially to modernize the entrepreneurial landscape. And most of those projects came throughout this collaboration and uh, get funded in US and, and um, with capital type of venture initiatives. So, the impact of the partnership was also important to open doors to many entrepreneurs, certainly some came from Portugal, but others worldwide, and to attract talent worldwide. 
the world has changed dramatically, not only in scientific and technical terms, and the world's data science now are everywhere, anywhere. And the key issue is how can we frame the next decade, making sure that Carnegie Mellon Portugal is always in the leading edge, and uh, how far can we select ideas, projects to be to be at the leading edge? At the same time, at the same time, it is clear um, to all of us, I'm sure, in this room, that the commercial ties between the United States, China, and in some way with Europe are um, putting new new challenges to the academic world and to the, to the research world. How can we keep our vision of doing best collaborative research and at the same time promoting ideas for newcomers, for new um, um, young people, uh, essentially in a way where we know that the world won't be similar to our past and the relations between the big continents are changing every every year. I, I came to, to this issue because this has become a key a key relation. Uh, I was called to the Department of State one month ago to be asked why we accept Chinese and Iranian students in our collaborative um, tasks, and this is one small issue of the way we need to position these programs in a very serious um, uh, way, keeping our academic integrity always and essentially uh, making sure that we know what we are and we need always to be considered a lead, a leading in collaborative joint ventures in any part of the world, in Beijing or in Brussels or in Washington or elsewhere in the world. And that, therefore, <coughs> research excellence and always sharing excellence, sharing excellence is certainly what we want also to show to the world in terms of these joint and <coughs> partnerships. This third phase is entering in a, in a period which I believe is very fascinating at the world level, particularly in the areas of data, data science, and in the broad con concept of what now everyone calls to be artificial um, intelligence. Actually, I'm sure those of you that just read the last OECD report on the digital transformation of the world, the world Economic Forum, uh, actually last week in Davos, based on the report which was published uh, three months ago on the future of jobs, it is clear that the identification of the role science can play on the creation of new jobs is very much associated with a number of drivers associated with data science, either in terms of the ubiquitous of the mobile internet or the way we process massive um, uh, data sets or Big, the way we communicate through, through big data analytics and more and more the advancement of the cloud and advanced computing technology. In this, uh, at least we have learned for many years with Carnegie Mellon that the only way to frame this is to really provide a multidisciplinary approach, bringing together mathematicians, people doing policy makers, and I'm pleased to see Iran here because mathematics has always been and in the core of the Carnegie Mellon program, as well as policy making and policy the design, and therefore the collaboration with the EPP was also very critical. <coughs> Again, Carnegie Mellon does provide, from certainly our view, a unique collaborative multidisciplinary context that I believe is a dream of many academics worldwide. So, the challenge is how can we frame this? Uh, together in a context with, from the Portuguese point of view, we always want to work with the best, to do the best of work, but also, but also more and more providing Portugal as a place to do new experimentation, certainly always under ethical issues, particularly in the data-driven society, but to provide test beds and um, uh, a landscape for new ventures in the knowledge that is the reason why we, together with the Carnegie Mellon Portugal, mm -hmm. are, are putting together a, a strategy for artificial intelligence. And this is a, a question. Probably six months ago, I was not very keen why a country like Portugal should have 
and it tells intelligence strategy. Actually, I signed um, or I represented Portugal in signing the European young intelligence. As you may know, the National Academies just published a paper uh, also launching a, a, a question <coughs> to the American research community why the West should also have um, a cell intelligence strategy. And that becomes um, a commonplace everywhere. In Europe, France and Germany are putting a strong strategy, but also Estonia and Italy. And so we put the question we have is how can we differentiate Portugal in a context where within Europe competition is increasing, but also at the world level, we have a serious um, issues to be dealt by, essentially, in a way that can foster new employment through knowledge-driven sets. And therefore, the question I would like to launch here, how can we, within um, the Carnegie Mellon Portugal joint venture, also help with framing a, st a strategy that can certainly be central to the Carnegie Mellon Portugal partnership, but also essentially oriented to select a few topics and um, many discussions with companies, some of them involved here in the academics, have clear show us, for instance. In the last decade, through Carnegie Mellon collaboration, we have identified at least two areas which have a world record. Real time the decision making, um, and we have now a world leader company in that area, particularly in, in the area of financial transactions and um, real time natural language translation. Probably there are other areas with, with specific um, knowledge at the world level, but we should identify, shall we keep those areas? Shall we not, shall we open to other areas? And for instance, uh, we have also tried to reorient this third phase to keep a strong issue on our transatlantic opportunities, particularly looking at the Atlantic and looking at um, Atlantic interactions to better explore data on um, issues associated with climate change and the interactions with oceans and therefore set up a, an international collaborative effort that we have called together with others in the Southern Hemisphere, the Atlantic International Research Center to provide an air data network uh, in a way to really look at the data which has not been dealt by um, either researchers and company and tools that for the benefit of our society. So the, the way we can adapt, reorient, always in a competitive environment, Carnegie Mellon, Portugal, also to better position, certainly Portugal, because we want to benefit out of this, but we, we also want that Carnegie Mellon benefits because we always see this partnership as a win-win relation. And this collaborative and competitive environment is important to keep. There are many people here that will compete against each other, building up different projects. Some will be accepted, some will not be accepted always under, I'm not an evaluator, so always under scientific peer evaluation. And again, this makes part of our job to increase the competitiveness and the collaboration pattern because others are also competing and, and collaborating. But I believe that we should be very proud of those that have made the Carnegie Mellon a unique partnership. Jose, former uh, directors, João Barros, the first director in Portugal, then uh, João Claro, and now Nuno and Rodrigues, certainly with many others in, um, in Carnegie Mellon. The only the decision as a population we have taken in Portugal is that. José Moura needs to continue forever <laughs> as a director in Carnegie Mellon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to make sure of the move by, by calling me the, the, the box. Yeah. Okay, it's good to see everybody here, a lot of friends. Uh, I'm just going to give you an overview because I don't know if all of the presence you know about senior Portugal. It's a partnership uh, that started more than 10 years ago and it has involved a lot of students, a lot of talent on both sides. 
We had uh, a lot of PhD and master students involved in the partnership. We also had a lot of companies. Um, Minister Manolito was mentioning a few companies that you will see as in this department now. Uh, we are at the three faces, and uh, the reason why we have these faces here is that because you should contact us if you need to you know, make a connection with faculty on each side. If you have students, you don't know how to find the student, please do contact us. I think these slides will be distributed later. And uh, we have a set of companies that are here, uh, uh, sponsors. Actually, we have two representatives from two companies. I will ask them to stand up because I think it would be a good opportunity to reach. From Altislav and Joan, yes. So these are two representatives of two of the companies that you see there. And these companies uh, are sponsoring and they will have to be the call for the big projects I will be talking about. So this is a good opportunity to talk to two of the companies that are here. We also have several companies here that are a new generation of companies in Portugal. Three of them have been named unicorns and uh, to have an idea, our 40 of these companies in Europe, Portugal has three and probably is going to have the fourth one very soon. So uh, some innovative companies that have been related to, uh, to this new Portugal project. So about phase three. So we have the, the areas here listed. Uh, many of the areas were already mentioned by, by the minister and, uh, and they are represented in the faculty. <coughs> And we are revamping the PhD and the master level education with an executive training model. And we are also starting the faculty exchange on both sides. We actually have around 22 people applying for the faculty exchange and we would like to have years on this side to do that. And we are starting the two calls for the, the big projects and the small projects, the collaborative and the exploitative project. This will be launched together with the other two partnerships with MIT and Boston. And so we'll be competing also with them. And the uh, level of funding is around 5 million euros for the CMU Portugal program. We are looking at funding between two to four projects. Again, these projects need to be led by companies and they will have to include PIs from Carnegie Mellon and two groups, two research groups on the Portuguese side. This is already standard for those of you already know the partnership. The call is just open. I think under the pressure of the visit of the minister here, the call has been uh, launched and, uh, you know, the executive team is also here available to answer any questions and we would like to have some discussion on the, the presentation. We will also have smaller projects. These will be projects around 100k for one year. These do not have to have industry involved. Of course, industry involvement is always good, but these smaller projects do not need to have industry involved. And they should be used more to kind of start collaborations, you know, try to get a couple of research assistants uh, working together on some project, and then ultimately try to uh, bring these projects to bigger projects on a later stage after one year. This call is also going to be open uh, anytime uh, as we speak. Finally, we have the PhD program. We've always recognized that the PhD, dual PhD program was one of the strongest points of the Carnegie Mellon Portugal program. We had the call opened like in a record time. I know I heard today and I'm going to have meetings later on. I know that we already have several students almost admitted to the program and we are looking at admitting six students this year and try to keep that number going for the next years. Uh, these students spend some time in Portugal and they spend time here at Carnegie Mellon and I think it's been one of the most important results of, of, the, of the partnership. Again, if you have a student, come and talk to me talk to Sylvia, talk to Jose, and we'll make the best to, to see if the student is admitted. If you don't have a supervisor in the Portuguese side, or if you have a very good student, you don't have a supervisor in the Pittsburgh side, please do come and talk to, to us to see if we can do. The current uh, PhD programs are listed there. Uh, HEI came in uh, later, and, uh, and uh, we will keep, try to, again, if we have a very good student, we will try to make the best to, to make sure the student is admitted and funded by the uh, another thing that we are trying to do here is, like the Minister Ator was saying, we had a lot of master programs in the first phase. These master programs were very important to build critical mass for the program. They make the connection with the industry very strong and they give, you know, quick wins for the industry partners, which we believe are very important. We have also here some members of the companies and we are trying to reframe these programs, not as traditional master programs, but more like executive education. We have three provisional proposals I'm going to show you. 
and we have a strong industry demand for these programs. These programs will have two durations, a short one, like two weeks, one week in Portugal, one week at Carnegie Mellon, where we are looking at, you know, trying to give top managers at tech level, so these are kind of executive MBAs for tech people, they are not, you know, with the type of business that business schools do. And then we will have other programs, which will typically have one week every month for uh, something like the same duration of our one year master program, again, for industry, and we have industry sponsors that are willing to pay for these things. We need to discuss the details. The three programs that we started discussing, and again, these are just drafts, are user experience design with HEII. This is kind of building up on the 10 year experience with the master in HEI, which was quite successful. It's still the, the master program that I was uh, personally also involved with, uh, they graduated more students. This will try to be uh, uh, an executive program looking at the experience for that. The same thing with software engineering, again, a very successful master program that was uh, uh, in Coimbra with people from the Software uh, Engineering Institute here, and that we will try to, again, relaunch you know, an executive uh, <coughs> version together with several universities. So this, this program could happen in Lisbon, in Coimbra, in, in Porto, and we will try to do the same with the others. And finally, one in machine learning, because again, this is a big demand and uh, there is a lot of, of, of need from the industry in Portugal for these, these programs. Again, we are talking about this. If anyone wants to be involved, please do contact me both on the Portuguese side and on the, on the Carnegie Mellon side. Uh, as you know, the, pro the partnership is an international partnership. It's not centered on a specific university, so it's open to everybody that wants to. Uh, I already talked about the visiting past lectures. The reason I'm showing this here also is not only we have 22 people with, willing to visit uh, CMU this coming academic year, but we will also like to have the other way around. So if you're interested in spending some time in Portugal, please do approach the program and we will try to see what are the possibilities of funding because we do believe that these exchanges and the personal relationships <coughs> that are created over these exchanges are very important. We have a minimum time frame for this. It needs to be a minimum of one, of one month, but it could also be a collaboration teaching one of the modules of the executive training program and then spending some time doing research in Portugal. I can guarantee you that the weather is going to be much better. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we are trying to do the same for visiting students. So having students visiting uh, faculty here at Carnegie Mellon, uh, you know, potentially candidates for PhD programs, uh, in particular, they should come here, spend time here, understand and learn about Carnegie Mellon, and eventually build up a good PhD uh, application. And finally, as Minister of Monitor just told us, he's a very active person, so he's always, every time we, we try to do something, he comes up with something new. Uh, the new here is the, the strategic pro, uh, program called AI Portugal 2030, which, by the way, Carnegie Mellon, which is always uh, in the front, Edge already has this the, uh, defined with the C CMU AI initiative. And I think this is again a great opportunity for collaboration between Carnegie Mellon and Portugal in the spirit of the it was just mentioned, a win win situation. Even today, you know, John Zimmerman was explaining how HEII and HEI research is looking at the opportunities for innovation in AI. This could be a great opportunity to do with there. I remember you saying, John, that uh, there are a lot of things that Google and Facebook are doing that could be done in the public sector, for instance, and uh, the public sector has a call for research projects that we could talk about that could be doing precisely that. And with this, I finish my presentation. Again, I think that we might have time for some discussion. So, um, you can see that uh, we are entering this phase, this phase focused on the great technologies that CMU uh, has been involved with and will continue to work. Now, you saw quite a portfolio, and I'm sure that you are all confused. <laughs> the ministry is confused, I'm confused, no is confused. Okay. But the way to overcome the confusion is to launch actual activities, initiatives. And the first one is the call for project. Now, the call for projects, there are two. And uh, I don't know if they are going to be at the same time or, or in the same way. way. But the one that we really want you to get a hold of is the call for large projects. Uh, the minister told me 
I told the uh, Portugal delegation a few minutes ago or an hour ago that actually the call was published, yes, right? And it will be open for maybe two months. I don't remember the exact time. What that call means is it's not for faculty A and B to get together and let's do it. It's actually for faculty A and faculty B figure out what is the company that can lead that project. And by leading me, this company has to have vision, has to have a real problem, a real interesting problem that interests academics. And so it's not like, okay, you become my programmer, developing programmer for whatever. No, because then you don't go. So it has to be research based and all that, but it has to be led by a company. Now, some of you went with a group of us uh, some months ago and we visited quite a number of companies in Portugal. It turns out that uh, you, the, 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 the kinds of technologies and the kinds of uh, work that they do are absolutely indistinguishable from whatever you think uh, a startup or an uh, advanced company or whatever. If you talk with the João Souza, who is the, the transportation, the electric transportation, he speaks uh, more advanced than I can. I can't understand even what he said. Okay, so these companies are really looking for advanced technology. So what we need to do between now and two months from now is to start establishing relations between faculty from here, and faculty from here, and I'm sure the faculty from Portugal has better connections currently with companies there. So they have to facilitate that. But Nuno, Rodrigo, myself, we have some connections and we have cultivated those connections. And so what we want is really to foster uh, these partnerships so that you write proposals <coughs> Uh, as it was mentioned, Bruno is very conservative. He said two to four, I would say four, mm -hmm. at least four. Um, but of course, the budget is limited. If we start dividing by a large denominator, things go down. Uh, so it's, it's a number like that, but it's not just one faculty member, for example, from CMU, it has to be a few. And on the other side also, it's teams that spend to at least two universities plus the company. Uh, the good thing is that the company doesn't get money from this program, okay? so don't worry. The money only goes for the academics, but they have to be engaged and they have to also invest themselves in the project. Then let me uh, make four brief remarks that we'll talk. First, about this question of companies. The companies don't need to be Portuguese companies. It needs to be companies which employ people in Portugal. For instance, uh, we would like very much to bring new American or at least American companies that want to invest in Portugal. We have two recent cases, Amazon and, and Google are expanding very largely their operations in Portugal. Uh, Google is just setting up 800 people in Portugal. Uh, Amazon is less, but also and these are examples that we can operate with American companies. The only condition is that they invest in Portugal and build jobs in Portugal. The new companies that are not yet in Portugal will be attracted to Portugal will be excellent. So open mind in selecting new companies. We can certainly work with those already there that we can have certainly. A critical issue, defense, defense related issue. We know that Carnegie Mellon has become a major player in using data science uh, with the um, United States Air Force. United States has a long standing collaboration with Portugal under the NATO system. This is certainly an area where um, uh, we don't have experience in the past working with Canadian <coughs> Air, but we'd be very, very pleased. And I just mentioned that to Jim uh, before this meeting. And uh, so I open questions whether frontiers which are not um, exactly the, the traditional way to collaborate and we can open other areas, particularly in the defense related uh, in the framework of a transatlantic collaboration. Yeah, 
The third issue is on executive education. Our dream is always to really do joint collaborative initiatives, either um, executive, part of the executive education being here, part in Portugal, we bring Portuguese um, uh, leaders and managers here, but also American leaders to experiment realities, a new reality in Portugal. Did that mean no example? And Antonio and Ricardo come from Minho. Bosch is establishing in, in Minho the leading uh, European Center for Autonomous Driving in, in, in Braga. Uh, we have experience already in our highways. A unique and um, European experiment on autonomous driving in, in an highway. So we can provide experiences also for um, technical executive education, making sure that they can find in Portugal unique environments for doing experimentation, either in executive or postgraduate education. And essentially, we are speaking here about a new generation of upskilling processes short-term formal and informal education which we need to train the labor force for the decade to come. Last but not least, my fourth point is that apart from the page funding made available under the same in Portugal, we are always open to new ideas beyond the existing um, and the agreed funding framework. One example that we have already opened to field I know is together with there. Uh, we are setting up a different project with a, a quite significant amount of money to foster digital skills in our primary schools and um, um, say basic schools as well as in vulnerable communities. And essentially that will be a different funding package uh, towards the development of digital schools and to set up a network of um, um, pilot projects for, um, again, uh, educating um, digital minds for the decades to come with very much an action research type of framework, doing research but some action with teachers in, in schools. And that will be funded apart from the existing MIT Portugal program. And as Jose knows, we are always looking at other unique ideas which can have um, complementary funding lines if we find a uh, reasonable uh, <coughs> idea and process to raise funds. And I believe we need to always work under the team that good ideas are always funded. So if we have good ideas, the funding is not a problem. The problem is with existing funds to uh, attract really good ideas. Questions? So, questions about uh, whatever. No, as a good good professor, I don't know if I'm good. If the students don't ask questions, I, ask, I, I point to the students. So, what's your question? Let's start asking. What do you mean by how important is it to have a strong team in Portugal? So, the, the, the way the, the call is, the primary, the leader of the call, and uh, uh, the company <coughs> working with the faculty on both sides has to come up with uh, a problem that interests faculty, okay, and uh, um, has to come up with their internal commitments to the project, and uh, that's what we mean by that. This is for the big projects, for the small projects, you don't need to have the company, you can yeah. just please. <coughs> Yeah, so things one from the Portuguese side, one from the economy. So the problem is finding the company, right? And uh, that's where we have a few leads, but anyone else that uh, um, has other leads, that's fine too. And of course, um, we, uh, so Manuel, I do have a question for you. Uh, we talk about culturally, I do answer schools, you say. Because <laughs> <laughs> <don't know> <laughs> <laughs> the question is, uh, uh, we talk uh, often about uh, engaging C. Can cities be leaders of projects? Okay, so many of you work on city-related problems. And so 
engaging uh, one or two of the cities in Portugal as leaders of the project is also uh, a lot, right? Either through the city councils or all the city councils to have their own say, city companies or public companies or private companies as to the city council. So there is a, a legal issue, but that's yeah. yeah. So we do know that some of these companies are already working on projects and they might be looking for uh, groups in Portugal that are coming in Ellen to do that. Let me give you some, some examples. For instance, four of the so-called unicorns are Alt Systems, which works on a kind of end-user development, uh, automatic uh, program generation. Now that Brad has been in contact with them, other people, which Kardish worked very closely with this company. So I do know that they are going to propose a project. Uh, Farfetch is, uh, I mean, it actually became public. It's uh, more than $8 billion now. And they are uh, very interested. They are a fashion, kind of an Amazon fashion. And they have a huge database of uh, uh, fashion items. And they are looking at uh, image recognition and, uh, you know, big data mining of, of these images to uh, understand what are the fashionable trends. And they, so they, they will be looking at a lot of people with expertise in computer vision. And, uh, and, and and mining. And Bubble is actually coming from a student from Carnegie Mellon that founded the company together with several other people. They work on um, a cloud uh, uh, translation and they are looking at really new ways of interacting with these trans translation services. They call themselves, you know, Google Translate them well. And they have a very interesting model where they have uh, crowd uh, sourcing of, of actual human translators working together with machine translation. It's a very innovative company, probably going to be a, a unicorn. Sun Fidzai is also coming from Paulo Marques, who was the co-director of the MSE program from Coimbra, together with several other people. They work on uh, uh, AI for fraud detection in uh, credit card uh, companies, for credit card companies, for the financial sector, also a unicorn company. Top desk does automatic uh, uh, automatic uh, call center, all completely done on software. They also became a unicorn very recently. And then we have several other companies, you know, two that are here, Altis Labs, which is a telecom operator in India. We do have REN, which is the public uh, uh, TSO. TSO. T T T TSO, sorry. Uh, Say uh, works on mobility and autonomy, it's a, a company in the north that has been working a lot on, on car sharing and they've developed several concepts for mobility. Vanian, uh, actually coming from the previous director of the program, does vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication. Uh, Thales is a big French uh, multinational company and their uh, base in Portugal is mostly uh, working with the aerospace sector. So you have a lot of companies that are already, you most of them probably, in, Sorry, TechEver also working, uh, it's a Portuguese company working also a lot on, on uh, automated vehicles. Uh, they are working very closely with the Air Center, which is an initiative of the Portuguese government to, to develop drones and to develop marine surveillance satellites. Uh, so you have a lot of knowledge, is the other telecom, uh, one of the, uh, the big telecom operators also operating in Portugal. So you have, which has been working with Pedro. So you have a, a mix of different companies. Not only these companies can apply, and like Minister Etur was saying, you could even bring a, a U.S. company that wants to do business in Portugal. And, uh, and there is a big mix of, of kind of incumbent companies with new startups, which are quite, uh, you know, U.S.-like, uh, in particular those ones that I talked about, Farfetch and Basel, Kitai, uh, Vanian, these are, are startups. So there is a big mix of, of, of existing companies which have 30 years of history and, and, and start. So one, one, uh, one other point. No need myself to bring. We will facilitate this. We will get involved with you as if we were part of your team. Okay. And uh, we don't pick winners or losers, and we don't pick teams. So if teammate comes to me, wants to work with Tech Ever, and wants to uh, uh, me to facilitate and me to help and blah blah blah, or no, we'll do that. And if someone else comes to me and says, no, I want to work with Fidzai, of course, Fidzai has lots of contacts here, so they need me to interfere, but let's say, um, talk that, I would also work with them and facilitate. The moment 
the teams are for the proposals are submitted our contacts in okay and there will be an international group we, you are all used to that of uh, evaluators that will evaluate the project and make the decision okay I just wanted to say that uh, I've been talking with some, some colleagues and some of them are saying, okay, the companies are not ready or we are not ready, we don't have experience working together to go for a big project, but there is nothing stopping you from submitting a small project idea for that small seed funding and then after one year, next year, you are ready to submit a big one. So please do look at the seed funding, not necessarily as you know, limited funding, I'm not going to be able to do a lot with that, but as a first step towards building up a, a bigger proposal. Yes. Can you comment something on the executive education part? I was recently part of a project with the University of Coimbra in software engineering uh, that unfortunately didn't get any traction and I would like to know what yeah. is that you're putting together now. The program that we are proposing here is exactly the one that we've been working on with Coimbra. Uh, the issue was that I think that uh, at that time, it was too short notice, we didn't have everything in place. And what we are trying to do is exactly to build on the great work that we've done uh, with the software engineering proposal and, you know, add more because we know that companies want not just software engineering, they are all talking about AI and, you know, uh, machine learning and also about user experience design because there is also something that is happening in Europe is that Portugal and Lisbon in particular are, is becoming quite trendy for this new high tech. Uh, this is why we have four of the 14 uh, unicorn companies there. And so we do believe that by having a, a stronger portfolio, we will be able to attract more students and more funding from the company. So I think that we will have this happening uh, this year for sure. Thank you. I'm just wondering if the date for the small seed funding is the same, the deadline is the same for the big projects two months from now. Uh, this is the, the call is not out yet. The call is not out, but I do oh, believe it's going to be something around that, you know, two months. Between the time the call is posted and the deadline is going to be around two months. So we are looking at end of March. Yeah, so you say mentioned that the companies don't get any money out of this. So what is the incentive for us, for the company to actually be involved? Not, this is not completely correct. The companies do get funding. On the big projects, the companies could to get, apply to get funding. And do they actually to, let's say you have a new company that wants to be part of this project, do they need to put some money into it to be part of the project? What, what is the requirements for them to actually be involved? In this? The, part of the requirement is the company needs to have a base in Portugal and needs to create jobs in Portugal and have all of these economic indicators that they will be required. Uh, but the company will get funded uh, partially, not completely. And uh, what Jose was mentioning is that the, F, the FCT funding will not go to the companies. This is com money coming from the Ministry of Economy. It's not money from science. Right? So that was what I think Jose was saying. Uh, there is nothing stopping uh, several companies from joining on a big project proposal. We don't know if this is going to be, you know, viable or not, because some of these companies, I'm sure Altis is not going to make a proposal with NOSH, for instance, that's obvious. It's not very clear if TalkDesk could work with uh, another company on language technology or not, but this is up to them. But sorry, your question was, I got lost. If the company itself has to invest? Well, I think if they do the financials correctly, they don't need to, to invest. I mean, they need to, to have expenses, but they don't need to come with upfront money. There are uh, other models which we are exploring. For instance, Google wants to work with CMU Portugal, and Google is deciding to fund it completely by their funds. So it's kind of a, a different model. So if you have a US company just wants to stimulate that kind of collaboration, there's nothing stopping the company from putting the money there. So to, to answer your question, why are companies coming here if they are not get that significant fund? It's because they are tapping on the knowledge of the fact. Most of these companies are very, very advanced technologically, but on their day to day, they don't have the time. This is the opportunity they realize that by teaming with uh, and being part of this program or projects like this, they can actually leapfrog 
the current technology. So that's their, at least that was what we got in talking with several of these companies. I did talk with some of them, and I guess there was some concern about uh, how this compares with Portugal 2020, for example. In terms of what? Uh, there was other calls, right? Yes. yes. Are out there, the companies are interested well, in? I guess it, Portugal 2020. Uh, to answer that question, it's, it's, it's more or less the same rules because the money comes from the same kind of source. Uh, it's Portugal 2020. The benefit that the company has is very clear. It's because by applying here and not applying on the standard call, the company will have the matching funds on the Carnegie Mellon side that they will never have if they apply without the Carnegie Mellon Portugal program. They can apply. Yeah, they, they can, can also apply, apply, and then they have to pay Carnegie Mellon on that separately. That's also possible. But I think the benefit here is that the Carnegie Mellon funding will be coming. Yes. It's extra one. Yeah. 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 Any other questions? Yeah. Are the projects required to have an like AI component, for example? So there might be issues related with autonomous mobility that don't necessarily relate to AI, but might be. Yes, they don't have to. I mean, the areas that are listed somewhere, or is yeah, there are all of these areas. So they don't have to be AI. The last slide was about the AI initiative, which is something that the administrator wants to, to discuss, but the, the calls are. Yeah. Three short questions. Um, the one, Manuel, you had spoken about engaging with the Department of Defense. Um, how do you envision that? Do you envision that as a U.S. researcher uh, working with the Portuguese Department of Defense, or like I have a contract with the Navy that I would work somehow across the Navy? And uh, how? Did, what, what were you? What I was thinking about. Uh, apart from this conversation, there have been many other conversations yeah. between and uh, the NATO framework between the US Air Forces and a few European and, and Air Forces groups. And uh, we are open to establish cooperation. Uh, um, and then uh, two other. But that needs to be done uh, with the Air Force. Yeah. 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 Uh, two other small questions would be. Um, you mentioned the doctoral program. What is the channel? So do, uh, is the channel the current, uh, so there's like a submission system for that, or is it more now that you uh, can answer that question. Yeah. So, yeah. so uh, uh, what Nuno was referring to is that this year, we, so in the last five years, um, um, applicants, for the CMU Portugal group PhD program were directly supported by the project. If they had a project, they would have the financial. Okay. Um, this year we opened uh, for a few uh, opportunities without, without support from the project, we will support a few, okay? Uh, if that will happen next year, well, no, no, in this case, is much more optimistic than I am. I don't think that will happen again. Right? Mm -hmm. So, in the future, most likely, we will revert to the phase two model where the students uh, will be supported through the projects. Yeah. Okay, yeah. but there may be uh, a few exceptions here. Great. Okay. Great. Um, one last question. Sorry for the so many questions. No, that's but great. The, uh, the future of work uh, interest that you expressed. Um, would you envision that as happening through a project with a company, as a small project, as a um, PhD project? How, uh, how uh, with, with a different group like a, a government? That is an area which is affecting all of us in any part of the world. So we are very much interested, but it can be, depends on the fact, can be one student looking at that through a, a digital program, or can be um, a small project, or if you bring the, the necessary um, stakeholders, can be a large project. I can tell you that that is an area where we just created in Portugal a new lab just to look at the work of the future with a number of major uh, private groups from um, um, groups like industrial groups like Sonai to groups like the, the, the largest agricultural group to people in the, uh, in the financial area, but also with the type of say, social um, institutions. So we are very much interested in better understanding 
uh, issues associated with the future of work and essentially in a way how to create employment mm -hmm. uh, in the context of say the dressing model digitalization of our societies in the country so, and we have now a new lab just to work on that and should be a key partner to provoke that and the bad gentleman over there I believe knows something about that. He's, he's not his own lab, but he's, he's collaborating with that new lab, which is called Collabor. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually, it brings his was such interesting the big private and financial groups, but to be the, the largest um, uh, leader of um, um, left wing unions. So, we are trying also to make this as a strong way to increase. Um, employment uh, unions and the people sitting with the labor force, with the private sector to understand how can we create employment in the future. So we are very much interested in that area because that is affected by the digital transformation either in a positive or in a negative way and therefore this is a key issue all over it. So, so let me just make a, a, a quick comment without being a promise that you hope will hold me. But for example, the topic you just mentioned might not be realistic to think that you will have a project and you will have a company and you will have this. That's a case where, given the interest just expressed, we might consider a PhD student. Okay. So, but I think the I bottom think line would be think about the CMU. Portugal program as a platform because there might be funding opportunities in the Portuguese side that are not part of the CMU Portugal program but that could, the, the program could enable a collaboration to be funded and mm -hmm. that, that's clearly one example. Yeah. Is there a specific portal to this program that yes. we can see online? CMU, sorry, cmuportugal.org. Mm -hmm. We need to provide some digital skills to the directors of the project. <laughs> <laughs> the website. <laughs>
propose and in the best way, to wait directly on, on the net. And this will be more possible in virtualized and soft, softwareized network using the uh, network function virtualization concepts and software defined net, uh, network. So our network will be more programmable. So it will be more easy to implement this concept of a self-organized network. So this is one, uh, uh, an area that we are, we are addressing uh, as a challenge. For this, we also have to capacitate resources and to partnership with, uh, with, with uh, the ones that already have, have these capabilities in terms of machine learning. So we are starting with machine learning, applying it, but uh, it's a process that we need people to change also the people in order to have more, more resources able to address and solve uh, the problem. So a telco company is uh, has a manancial of the data. So this the data that we collect from our operation, the data that we collect with all the, the privacy regards from mobiles of our uh, from of our location, for example, of our customer, that there are a lot of information that can be processed on behalf of the operation and uh, providing the information for uh, other other business. So this is uh, again an area of machine learning, and we are investing in positioning ourselves also to facilitate uh, new business, facilitate uh, other companies in, in the in Portugal and worldwide to uh, providing uh, uh, data management infrastructure as a service where we could uh, get, that could be applied to industrial internet of things uh, vertical. So uh, provide the, the, the infrastructure that could collect the data and this data then, then our, our, our partners could bring uh, universities and specialists to uh, run their machine learning algorithms on their data and enhance their business. So we also are positioning ourselves as a uh, facilitator in terms of data infrastructure to be used as a service for all the companies that are starting to, to work with, with that. This is another area, so machine learning is on top of, of, of the mind as our, for our concern, as it, it is a, a key discipline for the new business and operating our company and also providing new sources of, of the opportunity. Thank you. So, oh. Good afternoon, my name is Roland Fons. I come from Ariane, which is the Portuguese TSO from Portugal and New Explicitly. Uh, briefly, we have two major challenges for the new future. One of them is actually the way we plan our grid, how we build our infrastructure, we develop our infrastructure. And we have been using deterministic models to cope with uh, some security criteria. We want to explore new ideas of optimal um, uh, power flows of optimal uh, approaches to uh, minimize the cost and optimize the full range of uh, options that we may have for developed degree. This is one of the topics that we are very keen to look forward, work with the new strategy and approaches that we consider that uh, initiatives like, like this one and also the uh, digital science um, world, meaning artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning, especially for the options of development are really interesting to, to deal with. So we are kind of trying to understand what is going to be the, the next uh, value project that we can aim to, to fulfill. The other uh, field that we are aiming to fulfill and to pursue is uh, the following. We have a lot of equipment that many traditional engineers know them and they know their own child. But we are doing some decisions based on their reasoning, which are very good. And at the same time, we are getting a lot of data from that equipment, but we do not know, we do not know exactly how to predict the failure. So instead of using a, a time-based approach for maintenance with that every four years we go there and do such a, a several set of uh, operations, we want to find out what would be the best opportunity to go there and probably to avoid to introduce some errors of the equipment and to extend life of those equipments. So to do that, we do not know how, however, we understand what, and what we're trying to seek is a, a, 
what are the data that we are, uh, have already within the company that could be analyzed using machine learning or other uh, uh, kind of approaches that our internal uh, uh, technicians do not handle so well that could anal uh, make a, a analytics of this uh, amount of set of data that we have and we are not yet using at this best uh, uh, output. And the second uh, phase of this is what kind of um, data we should gather, so maybe to introduce some censoring, and afterwards to put analytics on that to figure out the predictive models of failure to better decide to replace or to maintain those assets which are critical infrastructure. So briefly, these two major uh, challenges that we have at the moment. Thank you. Richard, do you want to say something about Bosch, your relation with Bosch? Yeah, I can say something. Yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> Bosch has some major activity in Portugal, namely in the region of Braga, a company called Bosch Car Multimedia. With Bosch, in the past few years, we have developed several several activities, namely one, uh, one doctoral program that is funded by FCT. It is called the doctoral program in the advanced engineering systems for industry, where we are training uh, engineers, engineers that work in Bosch, uh, specifically in topics related with this, this call. Artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, data mining, big data, uh, namely in what concerns uh, making the production lines more efficient, analyzing the data that machines produces and all the, the information about the products so that we can make the production lines more efficient. Uh, together with Bosch, we have also launched a collaborative uh, laboratory, also funded by FCT. Uh, Bosch is one of the um, 11 companies that are now taking part in that uh, um, laboratory. Uh, and also developing activities with us and with other two other universities in Portugal. Uh, namely, um, Catholic University and also Beritria, uh, related with artificial intelligence, again, in this, in this kind of issues, and in cooperation with other companies. One of the companies also mentioned there is Accenture, uh, and NOS, NOS, the Portuguese telco company. So this is one of the two main initiatives that have been involved in the first of me with the Bosch. Thank you. Okay, any other question? For those of you that stay 30 seconds more, you will have the pleasure in your presence walking through the door. But uh, unless there are other questions, we will simply thank all of you for coming. If you have any further questions or if you want to do anything, send email to Nuno. You don't need to send to me, but send to Nuno. Send also to me, please. And we'll try to. Uh, to make all the connections. Thank you.